a a Ron. Yeah. Why didn't you say it the first time I said a a Ron? Because it's pronounced Aaron. You done messed up, a a Ron. A. A. Ron is right here, everyone. Thank you for joining me for more SPTV. Oh, I forgot a little name banners. Let me bring bring those up. I'm joined today once again by the lovely, relatable Reese. How's it going, Reese? Hey guys. Well, it's a little it's a little different than last night, isn't it, Aaron? <laughs> yes, last night was a lot a lot of fun. You know, as um, much as I've talked to you today, I didn't ask. How did you wake up? Oh, totally fine. I mean, five me five beers is not a lot of beers. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, not <laughs> my um, three quarters of a white claw <laughs> didn't do anything to me either. I actually woke up pretty refreshed. So maybe we should try that a little more often. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, Lori Play says your hair is bomb tonight. How about that? Lori, thanks. I washed it. Thank you. I don't notice things like this, you guys. I was raised in a cult. Um, guys, let, let's get down to business. Uh, the only one who done messed up today is Scientology official. Daniel Thomas O'Connor, um, who made the incredibly stupid decision of emailing me directly, even though I'm a declared suppressive person. Uh, he emailed me directly, not a letter from a lawyer, not uh, 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 complaining about the videos I did about him and asking them to be taken down, threatening that if I didn't take them down, he might even file a complaint with YouTube. <gasps> My pearls um, filing a complaint with YouTube is the first thing you should do before sending me a shitty, whiny, crybaby little email with a bunch of stuff. Um, uh, and, and what's interesting is that, you know, Dan, just as well as I know, Dan, the videos he's complaining about are partially v videos we've done together. <laughs> and I'm, of course, going to read to the world the email that Dan sent me, because why not? You've yeah. seen this email. What were your thoughts? I mean, has any has have they read it yet? Who's they? Our friends, our people watching. No, I haven't put it on screen yet. Uh oh, you just muted yourself. You touched the mute button on your mic. Maybe this yeah. thing is backwards. We talked about this last night. I do that all the time. Well, look, my mute button is right there too. I just don't ever okay, touch it. Okay, well, I just have problems, I guess. <laughs> Um, so my thoughts on this letter, it, it was, uh, or this email, it was, I was shocked, honestly, because we're SPs and he's not supposed to reach out to us or he could yes. get the cancer. Um, yes. And if also, you're wondering who Dan is, he's the gentleman in the thumbnail of this video. He's also, most of you have probably seen my first video where Aaron outed me by accident. I told a whole story about Dan in that video. So my take on this email, he mentions me in this email, not by name, which is a little strange because I just want to say to you guys, Dan and I were incredibly close, extremely close. And I grew up with Dan. Aaron knew Dan from a young age as well, I believe. And your brother did. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. um, in this email, he particularly calls me what that woman, that woman, yeah, he says, he that's says a little you are strange. Hallucinating. You are lying and hallucinating. Lying and hallucinating. I mean, I have a lot of evidence that I'm now not really probably going to talk about our show because of that email. But yeah. I do want to say one thing. I want to show something before we go on. This is embarrassing enough that I own it, but I've had it for <gasps> I, a long time. I probably have the same copy of that book somewhere around the house. Okay, so this is Dan's book. There's his creep ass picture on the back looking, looking off into the distance. Um, I just want to say it's interesting that he calls me that woman because can you read his handwriting is, you know, real fancy CS style. Can you guys read this? Aaron, can you read this? To my little sister Reese, thanks for your imagination and love of creating. Yours, Daniel O'Connor. So I just think it's interesting that I went from your little sister to that woman. And you and I talked about too. Now, this isn't all about me, guys, but I'm a little, you asked me what I thought of it. And I'm a little bothered that he used the word hallucinating. It's kind of strange. That's a weird word. Yeah, it is. Um, um, especially since he didn't say that I was hallucinating. Just you for some reason. 
Aaron, you're perfectly clear, but Reese, she was hallucinating <laughs> that story back when she was 14. So anyway, let's go on forward. But did I do yeah. it again? No, no, I didn't. No, no, you're good. I, I avoid touching it by just only grabbing, um, just okay. never grabbing over the halfway mark. Um, okay, so real quick, there, just, just for there. the, just for those watching Dan, Dan O'Connor's post is senior case supervisor of the Kansas city org. Now, normally speaking, the senior CS of a class five org would not be a big deal necessarily in the class five world. It's just that Dan is probably the most well-known class five org senior CS in the world. Um, for whatever reason, COB kind of sees Dan as one of his go-to guys because Dan was training on all the training programs that David Miscavige ran. COB is David Miscavige. Um, and he's uh, a class six. He's a class six. Never did class eight for some reason. Um, he's Weirdly, also OT, yeah. uh, OT seven. He's been a staff member since he was, you know, 13 or so years old. Um, mm -hmm. he, he, uh, through the family business, he's also donated I don't know. Is what is it millions or at least many hundreds of thousands to Scientology? No, no. He did at least a million. I think it might have been two, though. I think he did two million. Yeah. So Dan's firing on all Scientology cylinders. Um, and it seems like he should be smart enough not to send me this email. Like, at least just send it from a lawyer. Like, I don't understand. Let's just jump into it, though. Let's show the people. Uh, to Mr. Aaron Smith Levin from Dan O'Connor. You know, nobody was going to be confused who this email was being sent to since he sent it to my email. Like, it's not even like he had an official letter written and then attached it as an attachment. He just wrote an email to make it look like an official letter. It's a pretty stupid move right from the beginning. Okay. Mm -hmm. Aaron, for over a year, you've been making videos attacking me on YouTube. I don't know why you're attacking someone you considered a friend. <laughs> There's been a lot of water under that bridge called friend, Dan. Yeah. You're one of the people who helped get me declared. You're one of the people who helped make sure as many people as possible disconnected from me. But you send this letter as if you're like, whom? Me? I'm just little old Danny boy. Okay. I understand you've changed your mind about Scientology. But you've always known me as a good and helpful person. I would beg to differ, Dan. I have not always known you as a good and helpful person. Um, yeah, including that time that you, for some reason, chose to tell me that when you were younger and your sister would have her friends sleep over, um, you would rape them while they slept with a broom handle. I mean, that's not someone I consider to be a good and helpful person. But, you know, you brought it up. You opened the door. I'll just walk right through it. Um, you've always known me as a good and helpful person, including to you personally. That's amazing. So I wish you'd just take down the video, take the videos down and stop lying about me when you know that I am not what you are saying I am. You posted three videos about me, which contain utter falsehoods, defame me and violate my rights to privacy, my rights to privacy. I just have to quickly point out here, Dan. Um, hi, Dan. Uh, have you seen all of the websites that Scientology has created um, for every person who appeared on Leah Remini's television show so with fucking like, true. the most slanderous and libelous because there's videos, there's interviews, there's written words with the, the, the most false, exaggerated, um, slanderous and libelous trash you could ever dig up and your crying and by the way the stuff on scientology's websites are actually false the stuff that reese and i have said about you is actually true uh and we have evidence to support it and and you took the trouble to send me a shitty little crybaby email let's keep going his rights to privacy by the way i should say dan is a public figure that's not true for all scientologists but dan is one of uh, one Scientologist who is a public figure. They use him in promo. They fly him all over to do events and seminars. Dan is not a private individual. Okay. Correct. The videos also violate YouTube's community guidelines. Uh, Dan, if that's true, then you should file a complaint. That's how that works. The videos are entitled, I accidentally doxed one of my sources. That's Reese. That's the video that I did with Reese. Um, the other video is called Scientology Official Assaults Two Underage Children. 
that is a video where Reese tells the story. Uh, actually, did we? Was that a video that we did together? Because one of the children would have been my brother. I so I have firsthand knowledge of that assault, and I think the other assault was you. The story that you told of him assaulting you. Yeah. So of these three videos, I believe you and I were only in the one. I accidentally doxed one of my sources. Okay. Okay. The other ones, I think, were actually before that. Mm. Okay. Um, no, uh, uh, no, no, Wait, no, yeah, no. He, he you know what? These, the, these would have been excerpts from the video that we did together. So Scientology official accused of child trafficking. Oh, no. I remember I did that one myself. Yeah. And that was. That was based on yeah. the babysitter. What's her name? Uh, Asia. Asia. And um, Horton, the details yeah. of that were basically that he took a child from a Scientology family in Kansas city um, who he was basically there. You, I mean, Scientology likes to use the fake religious words. So if you want to play that game, Dan would have been one of their religious elders. <laughs> yeah. And he basically took possession of their underage daughter, had her living with and working for his family full time, um, traveled with them across state lines and everything to help take care of the kids and all that kind of stuff. And uh, from what I recall, correct me if I'm wrong, this person did not even get paid. Like her pay was Dan would pay for her Scientology courses and auditing. That's correct. I mean, yeah. it, it's always possible that we're wrong about that, isn't it? Or, or are you sure? Is that like a fact? Well, I can tell you the fact is they did recruit. They they pulled Asia. She had like four sisters, I want to say. Her both of her parents were on staff at the time, uh, Jim and Miranda. And the reason I know this at the when this happened is I was um hanging out with Amanda O'Connor quite a bit at that time. And I recall her asking me like questions like, Do you think that she's she's too young? Because she was like 13, maybe. They pulled the girl out of school um, and moved her into their basement, took her out of her home. But now her parents approved of all of this. So right. um, that's, that's, that's what, what makes I, it interesting. And, 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 and I don't legally know whether um, the parents approval changes the fact that she was pulling, pulled out of school, taken away from her parents. Um, uh, uh, Dan and Amanda weren't given legal custody. So you have a minor child living in a family that does not have custody of her legally. Um, and I mean, she essentially child labor. Yeah. They took her to flag cause they would go on their six month OT seven checks. They took her everywhere. I mean, I was friends with Dan and Amanda on Facebook and she was in all the pictures. Um, she traveled everywhere with them because she was their, their live in nanny. Yeah. And you have a, a sort of um, a power dynamic, a power differential there between Dan and this other Scientology family where they're literally putting their daughter into servitude for Dan O'Connor's family. I'll tell you, that's not even normal for Scientology. And that doesn't mean we can't find a bunch of stories, but that's, that's unusual. And I don't, I want to say too, I don't know this girl's age, but I don't even know that she's 18 yet. Oh, wow. wow. I don't know. I don't know that yeah. she's 18 yet. Yeah. Okay. So it was, I accidentally doxed one of my sources, Scientology official assaults two underage children and Scientology official accused of child trafficking. Yeah. Two, uh, three, three of my best videos. Um, every assertion of alleged physical assault by me, by the way, I can't get over the fact that Dan's a grown ass man and he still can't get his sentences correct here. Um, every assertion of alleged, like the alleged is anyway, every assertion of alleged physical assault by me of another is false. <laughs> you and I both know from firsthand experience, it's 100% true. <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I stop you there for a minute? Please. So do. Jeff and I went to dinner tonight with Huxley and we were kind of talking about it. And Aaron, I know that you're laughing, but you've been out for a long time. I have not. The, Jeff was like, Really? Like he was even surprised. And I know you're going to be surprised by what I'm about to say. I'm still shocked that Dan lied right there. I really assume still in my mind that Scientologists, especially OT sevens, eights are like ethical and don't lie. And reading that email that he said, that's completely false. That's kind of hard for me to take. 
I, I'm shocked that he's completely denying it. Then I kind of thought about the Leah Remini show that you were on. And I thought, well, what do they always say? What is their immediate? They put up a thing. Everything's a lie. Everything's a lie about this. Like they don't admit to anything. Why am I? Jeff was like, why are you surprised? I don't know. But I still it's like fresh for me. And I still am like, he lied. Like, I wouldn't expect them to lie. I I know what you mean. I know. what But you mean. Jeff was like, they're going to lie to protect the church. And like I even said, I go, I can't imagine Doug and Brenda lying. Like if for some reason um, they had to be deposed for something, he goes, you don't think they would lie? And I thought, no, I would think they would tell the truth. But clearly I thought Dan would tell the truth. And he or totally least, lied. I know. There. Or, or at least say nothing because now we've got it in writing, you know? Right. And also just the fact that he calls me that woman. I'm like, I have countless pictures of Dan and I when I was 14 years old on staff. I have actual photos of yeah. us on staff. We hung out all the time. I have this book that says, Hey, little sis, love ya. Like, yeah. it's weird that you're trying to almost make it seem like you don't know me. Well, and here's the other thing. One of these videos is on your channel as well, but you didn't get an email from Dan. Only I didn't I did. get an email. I kept thinking about that all day too. Why didn't he email me? Cause I'm assuming he's going to, he's, he's being, he's having ethics presence. He's going to intimidate yeah. you to get me to take it down. Right. <laughs> I don't know what he's thinking. Like Dan couldn't possibly think that he has ethics presence with me, which guys is it's a Scientology term, which is essentially altitude. It, uh, L. Ron Hubbard defines ethics presence as the quality an executive has that allows him to obtain compliance. So whether that's force or symbology, like having four, four captain's bars on your shoulders, or whether it's um, just, you know, reputation, Dan couldn't possibly think he has ethics presence. Great right? example for everyone. Ethics presence would be Meryl Streep in The Devil Wears Prada. There like you go. she's well, she's super hardcore. Or yeah. the real, the real Vogue editor, Anna Winter. Very, very much ethics presence. <laughs> anyway, I just wondered if that was the case. Why do you think he didn't reach out to me? I wondered if he would show up at my house since I'm local hmm. and say, Hey, you need to take this down and you need to talk to Aaron about taking it down. Right. And here's the other thing, guys. Let's just speculate for a second. How does Dan O'Connor come to know about these videos? Because we, we know he's not watching my channel. He's not allowed to. Um, we, the only way he finds out is the Office of Special Affairs, who watches every second of all of our live streams or, and videos. That's how I'm here. <laughs> that's how you're here. The Office of Special Affairs informs Dan of the existence of these videos, and they ask him to do something about it. I just don't know why what he would do about it is send me a stupid crybaby email instead of paying a hundred bucks to have a, a lawyer send a letter or file an official complaint with youtube why would you send me an email i don't know you guys let me know in the live chat if you got any speculations but um but here let's see there, there's there's more here uh oh, oh i and i do want to specify one of the uh allegations of physical assault was dan upon my twin brother I knew that. I can I can attest to it. My twin brother would have been 14 years old at the time, maybe 15 at, at the oldest. Serge Del Mar can attest to it. Many oh, other really? people. Oh, yeah. Serge was there. He was the metering supervisor because because the next morning when word got around what Dan had done to my brother, Marty Rathbun came to the metering course room to commend Dan O'Connor for what he had done for a correctly applying the paragraph in the policy letter knowledge reports Were that talks about eye? giving someone a black eye. That's what in he an, did. That's what he yeah. did when he hit me in an upstat, easy to live with and work with group at the first pinprick. Joe would have a black eye. That's a quote from L run Hubbard. And I want to say so, one other thing before you go forward, because like you do, I didn't know that about surge. I also want to say, I just, uh, I got to get over this and I got to get thicker skin because it really bothered me that he said I was hallucinating, but I have hallucinating for you. I have had at least five people since the first doxing video in uh, January, I have had at least five people reach out to me who were on staff with me at that time and have said, I remember it or I witnessed it. Or I, one of them said, I can absolutely attest to watching Dan beat the hell out of at least 10 people. I yeah. watched Dan be very, very violent along with his mother and his sister, Kathy. 
So if you ever need backup or if you need someone to testify, I absolutely know. And that's the other thing that it's funny that he says that I made that up. So my dad drove from Omaha to Kansas City that day just to remember that because Dan, because yep. I called saying he hit me. And then Shane took me that day to the ER because I was peeing blood after Dan was on top of me hitting me and choking me. So are you saying all of that was made up? If Shane had to testify, he would have to say, I mean, unless he wants to lie under oath and, you know, risk going to jail. I would, that's the other thing Jeff and I were talking about. If it came to that, I doubt too many people would be willing to lie and risk going to jail. So, I mean, that's another question. It's like, really, Dan? Because if yeah. Shane had to come forward, he would have to say, why did you take her to the hospital that day? Right. So when Dan assaulted you, were you also told that this was him applying the knowledge reports policy letter about giving someone a black eye? Yes. So my dad showed up after he, uh, he, I think he hit me with a fax machine over the head. My dad showed up from Omaha and I told you in that other video, he shows up and he got in Dan's face, like right in his face. And he said, show me how you hit her. I want to know how you hit her. Hit me how you hit her. And he said, Gene, because he didn't know my dad that well. He said, I am applying HCO policy letter uh, knowledge reports well, uh, where L. Ron Hubbard puts ethics in by giving the man a black eye. Right. And I remember in that video, that's when I learned about your brother. And you said he, he did the same thing to my brother. So there's too many. It's just, I guess I'm just, uh, Aaron, you're so much more analytical about stuff. Like I just th overthink. I'm like, how could you say that I was lying and hallucinating? We, we've got way too many countless people that can attest to that day. I have hospital records from that day. It's a little yeah. weird to me that you're like, she's lying. It's like, yeah, we kind of have evidence to the contrary, yeah. my friend. It does indicate a bit of um, desperation, I think. I just still can't wrap my head around, no matter how desperate you are, why don't you have a lawyer send the letter? I don't get why it. Why don't at you least, have a lawyer, but why not? I would still laugh about it. I would still do a video about it, but at least it would look like you were trying to be taken seriously. Official. But also, Aaron, why now? I was asking Jeff that. this These videos were months ago. Why now? It's a good question because it's not like they only found out about them now. I mean, you know, as soon as Dan's sister, Kathy, contacted you saying that she had seen this video that you did with me, there's no way they did not, were not at that time aware of these videos. Yeah. And, yeah. and Jeff made a good point. He said, maybe did, could he have lost his job? Like Brenda, could he have been offloaded because this has become such a problem? I wondered about that. We had a lot of protesters from anonymous stand outside the Kansas city org when I was there. Do you think there's a chance that people are going, Dan, you're a perv and you, I don't think children? there's I don't think there's a tan chance that there's some demonstrations going on, but I think there's a chance Dan is in a lot of trouble in with the church. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, every allegation, every assertion of alleged physical assault by me of another is false. Every assertion of sexual conduct by me is false. I forgot that we had openly discussed all the times Dan cheated on his wives, but I don't care about that. That's honestly more just trolling him. Um, okay. <laughs> to be honest, I mean, it's like, look at all the shit Scientology says about us. I don't, I don't mind, um, you know, exposing their dirty laundry since they love exposing other people's so-called dirty laundry. Okay. He goes, um, every assertion of sexual conduct by me is false. Every assertion of alleged trafficking by me is false. The woman you quote unquote interviewed. I don't know, Reese, was it not a real interview? I don't know. I don't get that it. either. Yeah. He's so highly trained and he doesn't have put the proper yeah. grammar down here. The woman you interviewed is lying, hallucinating, and you could easily have so determined had you wished to protect my rights and utter the truth. Dan, just for the record, there's nothing I would be concerned about less than protecting your so-called rights, but I do concern myself with uttering the truth. So not only is everything that we've said completely the truth, but we have many other people who would, uh, who would beg for the opportunity uh, to attest to that fact in depositions. So absolutely. Um, why don't you grow some balls and instead of writing crybaby emails, um, send me a lawsuit. That's what you should do, Dan. What does he mean by that? Like it would be easy for you to have figured out I was lying and hallucinating because I do so much peyote uh, that 
um, you, 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 like, had you seen that it was, it's easy to tell that she's a liar or something. I mean, I just don't know. It's, it's like, he's like, if you had only picked up the phone and checked with me, I would have told you. It's like, Dan, <laughs> we are declared <laughs> suppressive persons. Your church, um, has tried is following Reese with private investigators, surveils me with private investigators, has multiple websites dedicated to just saying the most awful lies about me. Uh, your church harasses me and stalks me online constantly. I'm sorry I didn't pick up the phone and get your side of the story, Dano. Will I'm you sorry forgive that me? Your, your basic <laughs> rights have been violated. Yes. Uh, I just think it's still with this part about this woman. Why didn't he just say when you interviewed Reese? I know. I know. Okay. You have used my name, likeness, pictures of me, and private personal information about me. Wait, wait, Dan. Is it private personal information or are they lies? I thought you said they were lies. It can't be private personal information if it's lies. Which part of the private personal info that we've shared isn't lies? Yeah, Dino. I was going to say, can we, can we get a break? Maybe you'll get a breakdown tomorrow from him on which one uh, is a lie. And uh, you've used my private personal information about me without my permission and done so in a hateful manner. Well, geez, if I smiled more, I mean, OK, anyway, these lies and violations of my rights have caused harm. Well, Dan, I mean, it sounds like you're talking about legal territory here, buddy. I mean, if you can prove that we knowingly published false information about you and you've suffered financial harm or personal. Um, I, I mean, I know Scientologists don't believe in emotional distress. Wait, what, what's that? What, what's that thing that always comes up in lawsuits? You've uh, I've suffered um, intentional infliction of emotional distress. I mean, Scientologists barely even believe in emotional distress. What, what type of harm could an OT7 class six suffer at the hands of a little old dirty SP like me, Dan? I mean, come on, you're the super, you're the super, you're the superhuman, not me. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a homo sap, man. You're homo novus. Yeah. You only made it to the pure of. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Dan says, please remove each of these videos from your channel and anywhere else posted under your control. I do not wish to have to file complaints with YouTube. Oh, my pearls. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't make me take that unnecessary that that major step of filing a complaint with YouTube or other entities. But I will if you decline to remove these three videos. Now he's Daniel O'Connor. Have you ever heard someone called Dan Daniel in his entire life? I think it's weird that he referred to himself as Daniel, um, well, especially when he started the email as from Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's sad. I didn't even notice that. Um, <laughs> what about, I love the end of that email. Like, please take them down or I'll be forced. Um, yeah, we'll be happy to do that when your church takes down all the hate websites. Yeah, I mean, I mean, my rights are violated. I mean, what Reese, about he, the PIs he said, sitting outside? He said, he said please. <laughs> oh my God. Isn't that so, It's that's some hypocrisy right there. I mean, just, you've said things about me. Uh, again, uh, the hallucinating guys. I'm confused why we we chose that word. <laughs> Aaron's pearls got to work out today. I love it. Um, I mean, please remove each of these videos from your channel and anywhere else posted under your control. I do not wish to have to file a complaint with YouTube. Now, <laughs> is is this a violation of anything? Is he is he right about that? No, it's not a violation of anything. And if he thought it was, the first thing he should do is file a complaint with YouTube. That doesn't require my cooperation. Like, like that is literally the first thing you should do. I haven't even had a chance to do all the videos of the different privacy complaints Scientologists have been filing against my videos. Uh, just because I've had so much more interesting stuff to do videos about lately. I haven't even gotten to those. But um, Scientologists have been filing privacy complaints against as many videos on my channel as they can. And YouTube just dismisses them because I'm not violating anyone's privacy. <sighs> so know. what can be done about this? Like, do you think he's going to file a lawsuit? He's not even allowed to file a lawsuit. Like if he files a lawsuit, you get deposed about all of the things that 
lawyers have told you are beyond statute of limitations right now. But if he files a lawsuit saying that the things that you've said are false, you get deposed. That deposition gets to be videoed. We get to make that all public. And that's that's a legal that's a legal record. He's not allowed to sue any of us who are talking about him. Yeah, I wondered about that. Like, is that why he didn't name me or email me? Because he doesn't really want to open up that statutory rape can of worms. Yeah. Let me address this one. Maybe someone else wrote that email. Maja, this email came to me from the personal email address of Dan O'Connor that I have had for decades. So um, that is an email from Dan O'Connor. Whether someone helped him write it or not, I I doubt it because of the mistakes that he made in the in the email itself. But no, he he didn't even send it to me from some, I don't know, new special email address. It was just his normal one, which I which I have not shown because I don't want to dox him. Uh, you know, his privacy would be we haven't given his address. We haven't given the name of, of his children where they go to school. We haven't shown where he lives or photos of his license plate. We've told stories of our personal experiences with Dan O'Connor. That's all we've done. And I just think again, how the tables, if you have the tables turned here, Mike Rinder had a, a camera on a birdhouse going through people's trash. You want to talk about rights being violated? I That's mean, right. I have PIs that sit outside of my house. You're right. Yes. I mean, we told the truth. I don't know what to tell you. I think they're scared. I think Dan, these guys are supposed to look like the cream of the crop, the elite, most esoteric, high ethics group and they're not. Yeah. But again, Aaron, um, why now? Why now? I feel like, and again, uh, correlation is not causation, but I, I wonder if this has something to do with Leah Remini's lawsuit in any, in any way, shape or form. And I'm not even sure I've, that's a fully formed thought on my behalf, but it did occur to me that if it's not related, it is at least intensely ironic that Dan is crying about us discussing our actual experiences with him. Meanwhile, Leah has just sued Scientology for the non-stop libel, slander, attacks, harassment, fair game that uh, and 99 percent of everything Scientology says about Leah and the rest of us is purely false. And Dan is going to cry to us. Dan, Dan is one of the people in Scientology who long since passed the line of abused to abuser. Dan is one of Scientology's primary abusers. He abuses others. He makes, um, uh, and, and not only in a Scientology fashion, Dan exploits the staff members in the Kansas City Org for his own personal monetary profit because they also, staff members also work for him in his business where he makes a lot of money. And a lot he, of money. And he knows those. And he, it's a, it's a head hunting business. It's a recruitment business. And he knows the I staff worked for members. Him. Did you actually? I didn't know. Yeah. Didn't know he hired me to do that. Uh, didn't train me. He said he didn't have the time, but told me I had to buy this specific laptop and some equipment. I spent three grand to start up. I did it for 11 months and I never made a dollar. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, yep. so like, why now? Why now? Why now? I think you're asking why now? Cause you're a little nervous about it, right? I am. Yeah. I mean, what do you think is the answer to why now? What, what's, 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 what, what's, what's the worst case scenario that's bothering you? Well, I'm a little nervous. You are so much more brave than I am. Like you just let stuff roll off. I love that about you. It gives me a little bit of courage whenever I'm near you or talk to you because it makes me feel confident that I'm going to be okay. But the truth is it makes me nervous because it's it's literally close to home. He's in the same city as me. Um, I'm, I mean, I've never been sued before, so I don't know if I'm going to you know, he's going to show up at my door. I mean, I worry about that, like him coming to my front door and threatening me and saying, you know, you need to get Aaron to stop or getting, getting uh, served with like papers that I'm being sued. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm pretty naive. I don't know. I don't know how the world works. Um, Makes sense. Makes sense. But um, at the same time, I think what's the worst case scenario? He sues me or both of us. Um, I, again, like you said a minute ago, I, I wouldn't think he'd want to go there with me. I've got way too much to shine light on that. Yeah. I mean, see, good luck. See, I think that's why he's just sending an email instead of 
it, it, even though if I was in his shoes, it, I, w it would be a letter from a lawyer. He knows damn well he's not allowed to sue us. It's the same reason Grant Cardone isn't allowed to sue me. It's the same. It's why I'll say things about Grant Cardone. Nobody else will because other people are afraid he'll sue them. I know Grant Cardone's not allowed to sue me. Um, so you, we, uh, you know, you referred to what's the worst case scenario. He sues us. That's best case scenario from where I'm sitting. Now I know that's the difference between how I tend to look at things and how, um, how you might look at things right now, but, and it's easy for me to sit here and go, Dan will never be allowed to sue you. But if, if that, those are just words, you know, if you're, if that's something that makes you nervous, I, I can't tell you not to be nervous, but, but I can tell you that, um, you know, when I was in LA and I did a video about, um, a Scientologist Graham Brewer, and I made some accusations about his conduct with underage girls, at least Graham had the sense to send me a letter from a lawyer. Now I still took that letter and laughed in his face and did a video about it and told him to go F off and, and told him I would love for him to sue me. And, and he just slunk away back to the hole that he crawled out of. And I never heard from him again about it, but at least he had the sense to send me a letter from a lawyer and not just a crybaby email. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly, I was, I've been trying to like think it's, it's made me nervous all afternoon, but I'm also not overly nervous, but I thought it would be really hard for him to sue. Like you, they, they, they go hand in hand. It can't just be Dan suing us for what we said. Scientology would be drug into it. Yes, exactly. So that's the beauty. It's like, you can't just be an individual suing us. Right. We're going to shine the spotlight right back on you and all of your crimes for what you, and, right. and, and, and I know about them. And so do you. That's and again, right. I've got quite a bit of evidence that I said I was going to talk about. Now I don't know that I want to show the physical evidence, but we do have some audio that you and I were going to kind of go over. And I still would like to do that at some point. I think we that have we some should. recordings. We have I some recordings. I, I have a couple of recordings of different Scientologists I talked to about Dan, that specific incident of him yep. hitting me and choking me. And just for the record, Dan, not one of those people defended you, just so you know. That's true. They might have made excuses for you, but they did that not defend you. One specifically was like, that's horrific and wrong. Yeah. But he is on OT7 now, so we're all good. Yep. We're in the clear. Yeah. And these conversations are with Sea Org members. They're with staff members at Kansas City. And your family. They're even with your family members, Dan. Not one of them said you didn't do it. So at the same time, I'm nervous. But even just now, I get this rush of like, come at me. Bring on your wrecking ball. Come at me, bro. Do you even lift? Do Bring you even lift, bro? Ball. Yeah. Um, I like this question here. Who is the DSA? in Dan's area, which is the Kansas city org. Could that person have helped him with his verbiage? Do you know who the DSA is? The director of special affairs? Uh, yes. Bennett Seaman. She's married to Bob Seaman, who is a dentist here of the Seaman Siemens. <laughs> I don't know, but I will tell you her maiden name is Cox. That's no joke. Stop it. C O X. Wait, yep. wait, the Siemens. You mean of the Kansas city Siemens? <laughs> Wait, of the wait, Siemens of the Kansas City Cox? Oh, is that what what? <laughs> she is the DSA here. You know, oh. it could be different now. I know Maggie Kittinger was uh demoted from being the ED forever. She could be the DSA for all I know, but for the longest time it was Bennett Seaman. Did she get demoted because she died or was this someone else? Sorry, that was um, that was she got demoted that. because she did not go for the training, the the admin training, and she was uh aged out you can't go if you're like over 70 and she's like 72 wow speaking of which speaking of which didn't dan o'connor's own wife amanda refuse to go for the training and the, so she, she got did. demoted as well yeah because you, you cannot be an executive without doing this executive training right is what i was told um and that's because dan and amanda have a scientology school in their basement here that they run and they charge a thousand dollars a month for because huxley was going to go to it so they make and money. Guess, guess who the all teacher is? Guess who the who? teacher is? Asia. It's the same little girl who watches their, their kids. Yeah. So, they don't so they're they're making a thousand dollars per month per head to have this um, underage girl. As far as I know, still kids yeah. in their basement. Yeah. I mean, that was back when I knew that. I don't know if that's current information, but yeah. Allegedly.
There you go, Dan. All I have to say is allegedly, and we can say whatever the fuck we want about you. You dumbass. You're so stupid. Okay. Yeah, I'm disappointed um, in him. Yeah. Okay, let's run through some of these here. Fabian and Deal. Why doesn't Danny just sue? He must have the means. Dan's worth millions of dollars, and all he could do was send me a shitty little crybaby email. I mean, come on. I would have expected something on some letterhead for the love of God. Uh, RW. Reese, you're looking particularly hot this evening. Oh, my God. Ooh, keep going. <laughs> I Aaron, like of course, is sporting his handsome and dashing blend of Johnny Cash and Mr. Clean. Holy shit. That's a good that's a good observation I like that. Good wishes to both of you. Excellent. Super chat, RW. That's a Thank good you. one. That is so, a good one. Um, uh, I'm, I'm curious if you're if the lawyer that you were working with or are still working with answered this question for you. What is the statute of limitations on assaults like that, Reese? Do you have any idea? Um, I only know the statute of limitations on the sexual assaults, but as far as the, this assault from Dan specifically, I'm assuming it's run out. Um, Do you know what the statute was on the other assaults? Cause it, this one couldn't be longer than that. So yeah, it was like you had to, it was like by the age of 26 or something you had to come oh, forward. Kind of, kind of, kind of. Uh, Jeff says, I think now because SPTV is growing exponentially and becoming a huge pain for Scientology and specifically Dan. <laughs> Um, that's, that's a good, that's a good guess. That's a good guess. Hmm. I'm guessing Dan has actually suffered some type of harm, but that harm, I don't know if you want to do business with them and you look him up, I think our trafficking videos are probably one of the top results for Dan O'Connor as it should be. So again, you have to prove that what we said was not only false, but that we knew it was false and said it anyway. And you can't prove that without discovery and discovery includes depositions and Scientology will never let Dan bring a lawsuit for that reason. So prove us wrong, Dan, prove us wrong. Um, okay. Lynn Donegan little Dan sure knows a lot for not watching your videos. <laughs> well, that's it. Speaking of that, do you notice how many people are in this chat? It's a lot more than usual. It is more than usual. Do you think uh, they're having like a Scientology party right now? And there's a bunch of people watching. <laughs> If you're one of the 2,700 plus people watching right now, can you do us a favor and hit that like button? It seems to help with notifications. And it would show Dan that uh, we will not be intimidated by angry crybaby emails. I mean, really, though, this is this is quite a few more. I wonder if I wonder if yeah. they're watching. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's 2,700 Scientologists in the entire central United States, by the way. So. Um, I think this is just the SPTV nation tuning in to see what the hell's going on. Being supportive. I love it. I love it. You guys, uh, Susie G any chance the email wasn't written by Dan. There's always a chance, but it's such a poorly constructed email. I'm guessing it was Dan. Dan does not have a high school education much like me. He's been a staff member of Scientology since he was like 12 or 13 years old. Like seriously, Dan's been there. Yeah. But in all fairness, Dan is supposed to be the smartest, highest trained person in a large area guys. And he, he's highly respected in Kansas city. I know that. I mean, he's also highly disliked. My in-laws couldn't stand him because he cheated on his wife and with another woman and got her pregnant before they were even married. And he was still married to somebody else that burned a lot of bridges for a lot of the old Scientologists that have been around a long time. They really didn't like that. So but, but everybody knows it's, it's, you know, nobody denies the fact that Dan is the highest train. And so he's probably the highest respected being a class six is a big deal. That doesn't that mean he did the briefing course. Yeah. And he did it at flag and, um, he's done all the golden age of tech two training uh, that I'm aware of. And he's OT seven. So like he's, uh, what you would call what Reese would call in Scientology, a big swinging dick. He's a dick swinger <laughs> deluxe. <laughs> Captain Dick Swinger. Oh, here's a funny one. Uh, do you think he didn't realize you would make a video off of this letter? Osa now knows he contacted an SP. <laughs> this is actually what was bothering Reese. Is she's like, he must know you're going to do a video about it. Maybe he's trying to bait you into doing a video. Are you mm -hmm. sure you want to discuss it? And I'm like, I don't That's care. I was what... like, is this a trap? <laughs> I was like, I don't care if Dan thinks it's a trap. He doesn't. Uh, I, hey, look, what's the worst case scenario? He sues me. 
That's best case scenario for me. His worst case scenario is my best case scenario. I, I'll take those odds any day of the week. So Dan would be a, have to be a moron to not realize I was going to do a video about this. But um, hey, you know, if it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck. I'm just incredibly shallow and materialistic and I don't have any money, but I have things that I love. And I'm like, I don't want to go bankrupt and have to sell my favorite bags and shoes and jewelry. <laughs> I don't want to lose all my money. I love my things. Like, I'm afraid that Jeff's like, what if what if we go bankrupt and he sues us? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, if we live under be, a bridge, I at least want to bring all my stuff with me. You could be out on the street with nothing but bags and bags of Twizzlers. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. I want. I still want to keep my fun accessories that I own. Uh, don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, okay, Evelyn Lee Barney. Um, there may be no answer, but I wonder what makes him and other Scientology folk like him think you are so easily intimidated. Probably because... Scientology the pants easily the, <laughs> the people inside the bubble think that Scientology wins every engagement they've ever had. This is the, this is something I've um, been learning. There are so many lawsuits that I thought Scientology had won because in Scientology, we were told that they had won that it turns out they actually lost the Larry Wollersheim case. I was under the impression that Scientology destroyed Larry Wollersheim in, in the court of in the court of law and just, you know, in the world in general. They paid this guy $8 million in 2005 or something. Now, most of that money went to legal fees and everything. Um, but I, 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 this is a long-winded answer. What I'm really trying to say is because Scientologists think that non-Scientologists and SPs are very easily intimidated by Scientology. They don't understand the real nature of the world out there. They, they, don't, they don't understand that nobody gives a damn about Scientology's True. tactics for the most part. Now, that's I guess that's true. not true, right? Because Scientology was able to fair game a lot of the sponsors for Leah Remini's podcast and the fair game producers at, and the, you know, the publicly traded company didn't want all the heat. So there are people out there who are intimidated, but they should know by now that we are not those people, you know? Yeah, I guess. I feel like Osa is almost setting Dan up like, Dan, what you should do is this knowing, knowing full well, it's going to blow back on him. I wonder if he lost his job. You think maybe got removed from post? I mean, you know better than I do on that, but I wonder if he was like offloaded or something like possibly Brenda was. We'll have to try to find out. Hey, any this of you could under be a liability, he yeah. could be such a liability. Yeah. Any of you under the radar Scientologists in the Kansas City area, if you have any knowledge about um, if Dan's going through justice right now, if he's been removed from post, if he's maybe been sent to flag for ethics and correction, uh, let me know. I got to I, I, yeah, I could guess all day long, but. Who really knows? Um, cuddle haggis. Dang. A douche polishes his head so much. A cuddle. Sounds like you're talking about me here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Y'all could fix your lipstick in that mirror. Says he's a minister among eight other titles. Panties in a bunch for sure. Yes, me and me and Dan um, in some ways look strangely alike. <laughs> in, yeah, in but he looks more like a freshly circumcised wanker. I said it. Come at me. <laughs> Earlier, uh, you've done a video on this before. That's the other thing. I'm like, I mean, uh, yeah, sue me, sue me, because I kind of would, I would kind of like that in a way, because Dan is also a uh, man mandated reporter. In what capacity? Correct? Because he is a minister. I'm not confident enough to say that that's true. Not that he's not an official Scientology minister, but um, the ministers are not mandatory reporters in all states. And so I just don't know. Okay. Well, we need to find out because it doesn't even matter if he is or is not. I just have enough. I need to feel a little more confident about this. Like, yeah, he's making me feel small and I need to not feel that way. I have way more than enough to, uh, to cover it. Yeah. Don't worry, race. All right. We have you the know I get nervous behind. about things. The, I get yeah. scared. I crap my pants a lot. I don't have a gallbladder. <laughs> we have the whole SP nation behind us. Look how many Lynn, people are in here. It's over 3,000. I, I don't know the last time I had 3,000 people on a live stream. I don't either. I think Scientology is having a coast to coast party. I think they're watching. The last time I, I mean, the last time I had more than 3,000 people on a live stream was the Danny Masterson guilty verdict. And that was like 8,000. But 
it never goes over 3000. This is a lot. This is a lot of people tuning in. Um, Lynn Dunnigan, little Reese. I hope your discarded paperwork is shredded and goes through your cat box before going in the trash. <laughs> you know, great. Lynn, I don't have any paperwork. You, you got nothing in my trash. There's nothing in the trash from me except Twizzler wrappers. Um, and, and such, you're going to see a lot of food waste in my trash. <laughs> so there's no papers to be had. Uh, red tar for me says in my stupid brain, the name Daniel Connor makes me think of John Goodman from the TV show, the Connors, my oh, ADHD in crazy. Don't mode. connect the two. I loved, I loved Dan Connor in the Roseanne show. I love John Goodman. Was that his name in the show? Dan, Dan Connor. Connor. No, just wow. Dan Connor. Dan. Con okay. Okay. Abigail says maybe David Miscavige is breathing down his neck, telling him to do something about SPTV. And this is the best Dan could come up with to satisfy him. Who knows? I feel like we'll find out what really pressure. Do you think he's under Not... pressure somehow? <sighs> the also the part where he says this has caused me harm. I would, I want to know like what harm. Right. Yeah. I feel like he's using that language because it flirts with the language of what would rise to illegal action. You know what I mean? Like you have to be able well, uh, yeah, I mean, you'd have to be able to show that we intentionally put out false information that caused him material or financial harm. And it's like, I don't know. That's why your letter should have come from a lawyer, dumbass, you know? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Jeff says, Reese, do you think Jeff is going to let anything happen to you? Advice to Dan, be smart, drop it. I don't exactly. think so, but I mean, I don't know, Jeff, you're right. My Jeff would be very protective of me, but he's also old and slow. Yeah. Andy Fabulous says, these are these are unofficial depositions used to find cracks in your testimony during an official deposition or court testimony. Be careful. I mean, look, uh, uh, I, uh, you know, lawyers will always tell you to err on the side of caution. Don't say this. Don't say that. Anything you say now, you might contradict yourself later. You know what? The fact is, Scientologists aren't allowed to sue us. So um, that's what it really comes is, down to. My story is solid and there are, yeah. there's not going to be any contradictions. It's true. And I remember it like it was yesterday. So yeah, again, I'm not worried about that. I mean, I guess I watched the Sopranos too many times over and over and over. And I just kind of get concerned. Like it's I've said this many times when I go out, it's going to be because I fed a wild animal and it attacked me. Don't fall for it. If somebody like runs me off the road tomorrow and I'm dead, you guys know what happened. <laughs> right? I'm serious. I worry about this stuff. Like there's going to be some weird accident on how I go. No, I'm going to go because I came to Florida to visit Aaron and I fed the crocodiles. <laughs> Don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. Do you think you got permission to email the big bad SP first? Love the both of you. The green looks fab Reese. That's the thing, Reese. I don't think somebody would have given him permission to email me. That's why I, do. I don't. I, you think somebody would have given him permission to email me directly? I think more without than a, not a letter though. Write that. You yeah. think he just did this on his own? He's going to get in huge trouble for doing this without permission. Don't you agree? This yeah. is going to stir up a lot of trouble if he did this without permission. I think somebody oh. helped him write that. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, he should have sent it from a lawyer. That's all I'm saying. I can't understand why he didn't. Maybe it's coming. Um, maybe. Elisa, Reese, we got you. There's so many ways to make Dan regret his actions. Allegedly, you both are my very favorites. Y'all are loved. Thank you, Elisa. Thank you, babe. We love you back. Reese, if needed to go fund me is an easy way for all of us to help. Consider this a down payment. Yeah, Aww, that's the thing. Thanks, we can raise this. If there's any legal actions taken, we can raise more than enough money needed to, um, you know, that's good. Cover to the, know. cover the, cover the, the fees. Andy Fabulous, Dan O'Connor, another missing Scientologist, <laughs> probably pretty soon. Dan isn't the brightest. Love you both. Thank you, Lauren. Um, Rando Loyal Lurker, AA Rana emailed you about how ticked off, how I ticked off an OT8 today. By the way, LOL, love you, Reese. I don't remember seeing that email, but I'll take a look for it. Thank you very much. Um, Lin uh, Linda, uh, poor Aaron can't get sued in the most litigious nation in the world. He's been begging for years. <laughs> Morning yeah. from Perth, Australia. Poor me, poor me. Uh, Andre, Reese, don't sweat this. You're doing so good by exposing so much. This is too big a uh, SPTV community that you'll have the support. Thanks for the video. Thank you, Andre. Okay, you guys are calming me down. <laughs> 
Look out, Dan. Reese's hubby is fierce, says Jenny Wong. Is he? He's pretty soft. Soft, but, soft but easy. He likes to squeeze the cans. <laughs> Cassie Maybe Isaac, Reese, tomorrow. you have a, a ton of new friends behind you. Remember who the hell you are, Ice Queen. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Aaron, do you think that more is coming? Since you're not obviously going to stop and pull the videos down? I mean, what's he going to do now? I think he, he, if he sends me a letter from a lawyer, I'm just going to do another video. I, I mean, he, I, I make money doing videos, make money. Everything he sends me is giving me an opportunity to make money showing how crazy they are. Like, honestly, David Miscavige should be declared for running Scientology ads on our videos, like paying us to expose Scientology fraud and abuse. That's crazy. Do you think that like, I mean, they're pretty crazy as far as like their fair gaming tactics. Do you think I really need to be worried? Like, will I be worried? Threatened? Do I think you should be worried? No. Do I think you should um, be vigilant? Yes. Uh, you know, document everything. Take photos. Take videos. Uh, but worried? No, you should never worry. You should just be uh, just be aware. That's you don't fine. think some creeper is going to like follow me into a dressing room in a store and like threaten me within an inch of my life? Maybe. But record it if that, you're if supposed that to say no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, All no, right, I don't I'll just, think so. I just won't leave the house. <laughs> Elizabeth Marino, maybe the why now is because OSA is just so backed up with all their SPTV concerns. Also, I love that this is just getting more attention now. Yeah, that's yep, yep, true. Yep. It's, yeah, shining the light on it. Tony Lynn, awesome knickerdoodle. You're unstoppable because once the darkness has been exposed to the light, it can no longer run, it can no longer hide yeah dan is screwed i i mean i if dan hadn't sent me this letter we wouldn't be talking about dan right now dan you're so stupid what are you doing come on anyway i love your confidence uh, luna 3120 wanted to say hello and reese sptv has your back heck yeah thank you luna okay J Shelby says, Reese, we're friends on Facebook. I missed the first part of the show. What <clears throat> what was sent to you by an official? Love you both. Shelby, you got to go back to the beginning of the video. <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole long email, Shelby. It's, and it's guys, if it means, I, with this many people, I've seen a couple of comments saying, what is this original video you're talking about? Maybe Goldie or somebody. Can they post it, Aaron? I'll put There's links in the description down below to all the videos Dan's complaining about. Okay. There's a specific one that has a story of Dan and I. Yeah. And his, his being violent. Um, Jeff, again, we got you. You Jeff. got this. We got you back for every action. There's an equal or greater reaction. Just saying. I love Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Andy, fabulous. Aaron, did you get my email with the video attached? Andy, that doesn't ring a bell, but I'll take a look again. Um, Brian McCann, a peckerhead, bell end slang term. All right. <laughs> right Sarah on. says, I grew up near flag as a child in the eighties. The first thing my parents told me about Scientology was that it was a scam. The world sees Scientology clearly. Not to worry if someone from Scientology sues anyone in the SPTV community. The SP Nation will step up and raise whatever is needed for an attorney fund. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Keelan McDonald, speak with confidence, Reese. What the hell? You took down the Titanic. Stop worrying. We will all kick their butts. I love Keela. Thank you, Keela. <laughs> Um, Cindy says, Reese, we got you rabbit. Never yeah. been a Scientologist, but thank you for educating the public about this cult. Reese, don't worry. There are some non cultists behind you. Yeah. Heck yeah. You guys are right. Which, so rapids four, four, four says Missouri ministers are mandated reporters. Kansas ministers aren't very interesting. Um, I hope that's true. Yeah. Please, Dan, please sue a, a. Ron. He's got friends. <laughs> All right. Well, what does he didn't holy... say I'm going to sue you? It was pretty. It was actually pretty weak. He was like, I will be forced to go to YouTube. I'm going to have to tell YouTube about this. Like he kind of made it sound like or or what did he say? Or take further action. Yeah, he goes. Um, uh, I do not wish to have to file complaints with YouTube or other entities, but I will. What if would you the decline, other entities be? What does that even mean? The police or, you know, a lawyer or whatever. If you decline to remove these three videos, well, needless to say, Dan, you can take this as my official um, declination. I decline. I do decline, good sir. Don't you? I mean, I know we already covered this, but I just think it's hilarious that he's just crying like a little girl, yet 
Scientology has done the most vile, horrific things and said horrible things about people that were truly false. Um, like I said, like Mike Rinder, like you, um, the PI is outside my door, but you're upset that your, your rights were violated. I know it's, crazy. it's so hypocritical. It's uh, kind of like you're surprised that he would lie. I'm surprised that he would even pretend you've violated my rights right, and my privacy. Ah! I also think it kind of is a big indicator that this is the truth and you know it's the truth. Because if it was all a lie, like you're saying, you'd probably let it roll off. Like, who cares? It's not true. But the fact, I feel like it struck a nerve because it is true. And it's affecting his livelihood. Yeah. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's affecting his actual business and not his standing at the org. I would, Aaron, you don't see my inbox since, since January. When we first did that video, I have been talking to thousands of people, supporters, people, friends that have said like, fuck this guy. And I wonder if some people have locally gone and protested at the org or at least like Facebook messaged him. I do wonder if he's getting some hate mail. Don't you? We had tons of anonymous protesters outside the Kansas City Org. We were instructed all the time not to make eye contact, don't talk to them. Hmm. Well, whatever's going on, we'll know more in the future. And when we find out more, you better believe you will know more as well. Because we will not neglect an opportunity to take the kind of shitty shenanigans that Scientology pulls and expose it to the world in uh, the best way that we know how. And that's right here on YouTube with y'all. With all y'alls. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in. I didn't even expect this to be more than a 20-minute video. <laughs> We've been yeah, going for an hour. Yeah, so supportive. That's okay. And but well, yeah. since there's so many people in here, um, I never say this, but come over and, and like my channel or follow it or subscribe or whatever it is you're supposed to do. Yeah, Come over um, because I do daily videos, too. But Aaron and I are kind of a team. Yeah, guys, check out Relatable Reese's YouTube channel. I've got a link in the description down below. And uh, and I'll also put a link to the videos that Dan really wishes weren't on YouTube. All right, okay. guys. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Thanks to everyone who watches until the very end. We'll Bye, guys. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, dance, then you could click.